Nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. In this parable, Jesus was most likely referring to the black mustard plant. Starting from a seed about one millimeter in size, the black mustard plant could grow up to nine feet in height. Like other flowering plants, this one will eventually produce small yellow flowers and spread its famous tiny seeds to start a new generation. With his death and resurrection, Jesus planted the first seed of a new garden, a garden which would soon grow at a rapid pace. On Pentecost, when Peter stood up and quoted the prophet Joel, he planted 3,000 new seeds that day. When Stephen was martyred, the seeds of Christianity were spread throughout the Holy Land. The Apostle Paul soon spent his born-again life spreading seeds across the land of the Gentiles, opening up the gospel to a brand new group of people. In one decree, Emperor Constantine transformed Christianity into a mainstream religion. And over the next 1,200 years, the seeds that the saints planted carried on the truth of the message of Jesus in the face of the horrors and brutality of the Dark Ages. It was Christianity that transformed the slave trader John Newton into a fighter for abolition, and he began spreading the seeds for a new movement of freedom. 150 years later, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. would speak his famous words, I have a dream, in the midst of our nation's battle for equal civil rights, and he would help to grow the garden in a way our country had never seen before. But behind all those whom history chose to remember, there are a countless number of tiny acts, each one a seed for a new plant, which shaped who those people would become. We probably won't become famous for what we did during Mission Possible this year, but we planted a huge amount of seeds which will become a vast and beautiful garden. Today, the population of Pontiac, Michigan is a little bit under 60,000. This figure is down from over 80,000 40 years ago, and about 1 in 5 people in the city live under the federal poverty line. Pontiac has suffered financial problems over the past few years. Until recently, the city's finances had been under the control of a state-appointed emergency manager. Even as Pontiac starts to get its budget problems under control, there are plenty of people who still need help, and their problems can't be solved by cutting services and privatizing others. That is where groups like Mission Possible fit in. This year, we stayed at All Saints Church in downtown Pontiac. It was there at night that we built up our community through an assortment of fun games and activities. While these games are great for making new friends, the most important part of this mission trip was the work that we did during the day. So that's why we broke up into small groups and headed out into the city. Thanks to Grace Centers of Hope, the missioners did get pretty familiar with handling dirt. There was plenty of shoveling, sweeping, and carrying it around in wheelbarrows. Fortunately, that was not all the Grace Centers of Hope had for us to do. One day, a group spent the morning pulling weeds, and another group got to put a railing on an outside staircase in the afternoon. Oh, and then finally, our college team got to clean out the backyard of a newly purchased house, and they kind of encountered a swarm of angry bees in the process. In addition to serving as our lunchroom, one team at the Baldwin Center spent a few days building a new set of shelves for the clothing shop. A few Sharpie signatures later, and the shelves had a hidden time capsule reminding generations to come of the craftsmen who worked on their project. Inside, another team put in quite a few hours doing a really nice job of painting several rooms a pretty shade of light blue. A few of the groups are not always attached to either Grace Centers of Hope or the Baldwin Center. These groups traveled around the area tackling a variety of jobs. One group performed the annual maintenance of a walkway to Senior Living Center, sweeping away leaves and clipping branches, and then on another day, the college group helped move furniture from a donation warehouse to the houses in the area that needed them.
Sean's group was the hardest to track down because they were all over the city. At one house, they tore down a railing, they built a railing at another house, and still they found time to level the bricks on her front porch. This would probably be a good time to comment on the car explosion scene from earlier in the video. One of the traditions from these mission trips is to create a short film featuring the missionaries. Ryan Wilkie, seen here disrupting the filming of the last scene, is the director of the film. This year's movie continued the story of the evil Dr. Vladimir Vossler IV that was started in the mission trip trailer from a few months ago. Mission Possible 2013 ended with a banquet that we hosted for all of our friends and family. This event on Friday night gave us one last chance to look back at all the work we had accomplished and to say goodbye to all of our new friends. As I grow, I know that who I am, you are completing. Yes, I know your word is true. In harmony, I walk with you. You've given me each day I live, and with each day. With Mission Possible over, it is time to return to our daily lives. It may be difficult to see how such a small event could have an impact in the world, but small events have always driven history. Unlike our favorite books and movies, we will likely never know the ending to the story we started this week. However, to the history that has yet to occur, this small start may mean everything. Just show me